Islam is in the news regularly due to terrorist attacks, but whenever we quote the Muslim sources that justify these attacks, people object and say, but there's violence in the Bible too. People who respond like this are obviously missing the point. Our criticism of the Quran isn't simply that it contains violence. Almost any history book will contain violence. A book about World War II, for instance, will contain lots of violence. The problem with the Quran is that it promotes ongoing violence. The final marching orders of the Quran are to fight those who do not believe in Allah. So do we find the same problem in Christianity? Are Christians commanded to violently subjugate unbelievers? Let's think about how Christians are told to live. In Mark 12, one of the scribes asks Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answers, the foremost is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the heart of Christian morality, according to Jesus, is love, love for God and love for others. We obey God because we love Him. We care for others because we love them. In the Gospels, Jesus tells us that our lives are to be characterized by gentleness, mercy, and peace. In Matthew 5, 5, Jesus says, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. In 5, 7, He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. In 5, 9, He says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Later in the same chapter, Jesus tells His followers to love even their enemies. He says to the crowd, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. This is very different from what we find in Islam. In Matthew 26, some soldiers come to capture Jesus, and the Apostle Peter pulls out a sword and strikes the servant of the high priest. Jesus says to Peter, Put your sword back into its place, for all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Jesus then heals the injured man, a man who was part of the group that was conspiring to have him crucified. In John 18, 36, Jesus is being questioned by Pontius Pilate, who wants to know what Jesus did to upset people so much that they'd want Him crucified. Jesus says to Pilate, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. So according to Jesus Himself, Christians don't fight and conquer in His name. Why? Because the kingdom of God is not an earthly kingdom. Are Jesus' teachings peaceful? Jesus tells us that the greatest commandments are to love God and to love our neighbors. He tells us that we're to be gentle and merciful. He tells us to be peacemakers. He tells us not to return violence for violence, not to retaliate against evil people. He tells us to love everyone, even our enemies, even those who persecute us. He tells us to put down our weapons. He tells us that His followers do not fight. Religions just don't get any more peaceful than this. So it's clear that the Gospels promote peace. What about the rest of the New Testament? In Romans 12, the Apostle Paul gives Christians some guidelines about how we're supposed to live. In verse 17, he says, Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Verse 18, If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Verse 19, Never take your own revenge, but leave room for the wrath of God. Don't retaliate. Let God repay the evildoers. Verse 20, if your enemy is hungry, feed him, and if he is thirsty, give him a drink. Paul tells us to care for our enemies. In 1 Corinthians 16, 14, Paul says, let all that you do be done in love. In Ephesians 5, 2, Christians are commanded to walk in love. In 1 Thessalonians 3, 12, Paul says, may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another and for all people. We are to abound in love for all people. In 1 Thessalonians 5.15, Paul commands us to see that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. In 1 Timothy 2.1, Paul says to Timothy, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men.
In Titus 3.2, Paul says that Christians are to malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. Over and over again, Paul tells us to love everyone, to live in peace with everyone, to be gentle towards everyone. We see the emphasis on peace, gentleness, and love in other New Testament writings as well. The author of Hebrews in 12.14 says that Christians are to pursue peace with all men. In 1 Peter 2.17, the Apostle Peter tells us to honor all people. In 3.8-9, Peter says that Christians are to be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. He adds in verse 11 that Christians are to turn away from evil and do good, that we are to seek peace and pursue it. To sum up the position of the New Testament, in 1 John 4, 8, the Apostle John says, The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So, does the Bible promote ongoing violence the way the Quran does? Clearly not. The Bible promotes ongoing love, peace, mercy, and concern for others. Precisely the opposite of what we find in the Quran.